Well, it's a beautiful Saturday morning. Fairly dry this morning. So I got all the animals fed. They're all happy. Donkeys are happy. The goats are happy. And the pigs are happy. If you watched my, been following my videos, we got these pigs when they were babies, and now they're monsters. They've been eating like 120 pounds of feet a week. So, they're going to be good pork chops and sausage. So anyways, time to uh, go get my pickup hooked to the way wagon. And uh, we're going to do some uh, soybean uh, yield checks today. And see if we can get some beans cut before the rain comes. So, better go do all that. Well, we're down here on my grandpa's farm this morning. Finally uh, got the cow mines ready. We're going to cut some beans here soon. Um, I walked out here. This side is Pioneer beans. This side is Beck's beans. You can see a color difference. The Pioneer a lot, lot lighter color. The Beck's are a lot darker brown. So uh, we're going to be getting our uh, seed tender. We're going to use it as a way wagon today. And we're going to see uh, if there's any difference in the beans, uh, yield-wise, weight-wise. We'll see what happens. So uh, we're going to get to cow mines. I'm going to get this field broke in. And uh, we're going to get cutting. So I just wanted to come out here and just see if there's any visual difference. Uh, they kind of ended up the same height everything looks the same about them same amount of pods looks like so we'll see what happens it's gonna be interesting so i'm gonna go get the gleaner and start cutting beans mm, grandpa jack and dad on a golf cart looks like a golf cart's a new service truck for the 1660 <laughs> oh that's funny all you hear is the bean stubble crunching under the tires because it's electric. That makes it funnier. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, I gotta go put my head back on because I plugged my cylinder last night with grass. So I took my head off to uh, unplug the cylinder. So now I gotta go put my head back on. Easiest way to, easiest way to get the cylinder bolts out, uh, to loosen the cylinder out, or loosen the cylinder up, is to just take the head off because then you can get both sides of the cylinder easily without walking around the head to loosen stuff up so i just take it off and then take a bar in the in the cylinder pulley and get her uh, worked out so so i'm gonna put my head back on and we're gonna get out there and cut some beans they look promising out there so fingers crossed they'll yield they'll yield good so okay so now we're measuring the length of the field so that we can uh, figure out um, how far we have to cut with the 25 foot head down and back and down and back again to get an acre. So this is not exact, but it'll be a rough estimate of an acre. So that way we can figure out how to do our yield checks. So we got the truck dad strength driving because I didn't feel like walking because we're already up to 900 and it keeps changing there's 935 940 yeah it's going too fast to count so uh we're gonna see what we come up with and then uh we're gonna head back and uh get the seed tender ready so we can measure out our weight and see what we get so we got our uh, measurement that we needed on the road, and it turns out one pass 25 foot wide, the length of the farm equals one acre, roughly, which it's close enough, it's like a point something. So what I'm doing now is I'm between the two brands of seed right now, I've got the Bex over here and the Pioneer over here, and I'm gonna cut right down the middle of them and uh, separate them so that when we do our tests there's no getting into one or the other and that'll give us kind of a more average soil type through the middle of the field being that that's a little better ground right there along the road so this the middle of the field here is a little more average so uh, we'll do our 
heel checks both ways of this pass. So, and this will make sure that there's no contamination of Pioneer or Vex in our tests. So I'm gonna cut down to the end of the field and then uh, by that time, Roger from MNR Ag Service should be here and uh, he's gonna help us with the yield checks and Dad will be back from the elevator with the semi so we'll have something to dump into. Beautiful beans out here though. These are looking really good. So I think they might be like neck and neck with each other on yield. I mean, height wise they're the same. They look like they have the same amount of pods on them. Uh, they look to be healthy, so. But this year was just a tough year for soybeans. I mean, there's, they're just, they're just not out there like they should be. And it's not just ours; it, it's everybody's. So, I mean, it was definitely influenced by the weather. You know, we had all that rain in the beginning, and then it just dried up and stayed dry for a long time, hot and dry, and that. No rain, no grain. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Mother Nature, we can't do nothing about that. This is all dry land. We don't have irrigation on it. So I was talking to the neighbor, and he said even his irrigated beans weren't the best either. So I think it had just a lot to do with the hot and dry all around. Even if you did have water on them, it didn't really make too much difference. So, uh... I'm going to cut down to the end of the field, going to trim the ends off down there, and then we're going to just take a remeasure real quick, just to be a little more accurate, and then we'll start our yield checks. was going to cut the beans for the yield check, but uh, my chain come off on my reel drive, so Dad's going to do it now. So we're in the process of fixing it. See if we can patch it back together to finish the day out. We're going to need a new roller chain, though. That one's pretty tired. It's got some stiff links in it, so we're going to lube it up real good and see if it'll run for a while. Dad strengths putting it back together. He made it all better. So... Well, see if it'll run now. If it'll run, we'll just cut some beans on this side and just put these on the truck. Because we only need uh, two strips to cut for yield check, so. Which Dad's doing that right now. So he's going to cut down the length of the field. We're going to dump the hopper and the seed tender down there and weigh it. And right now he's in the Bex beans. And then he'll come over into the Pioneer beans. And do the same thing and we'll weigh that and then do some uh, math and it'll tell us what they did bushels per acre so okay we're gonna try this again so we're all set up to do our yield checks now I got the seed tender over the hopper bottom so now when dad dumps in there we can weigh it and see what we got so we're on our second yield test here and so far, the Bex and the Pioneer are within a half a bushel of each other. So, can't be upset with that at all. They are neck and neck, literally. And I thought they would be. Well, we got the yield checks all done. And uh, between the Bex and the Pioneer, the Bex was a half a bushel higher than the Pioneer. So, uh, I mean, a half a bushel, that's not really that significant. Uh, I mean, not going to say who's bad, who's good at a half a bushel. Uh, they both, they're both standing very well. Uh, they both dried down very well. Uh, they're, they're both good-looking bean. So, until we do some more tests, I'm not going to say that... Pioneer's better or Bex is better? So uh, that's where we're going to leave it off at for now. Uh, we are going to do some more tests. I've got some more test plots that I want to weigh out and see what they say. But uh, as far as of right now, I'm happy with uh, both seed companies. 
So, uh, it is what it is. So anyways, uh, we're going to finish cutting these damn sprayer tracks with grass in them are kind of a pain in the ass. But, uh, sprayed twice, not by me, and we still have grass in the sprayer tracks. So, uh, looks like next year we're probably going to be uh, owning our own sprayer so that we can spot spray and get rid of some of this. So, uh, because that, that grass is a little excessive if you ask me. I'm not, I'm not real happy with that. And uh, there might be some bill adjustments here at the end of the year on that. So, but uh, anyways, I think that's going to wrap up this episode of Dirt Green Steel down here on my uh, grandpa's farm, the family farm that uh, great grandpa started out on. So, uh, beautiful day of bean cutting. Had a few, few slight breakdowns. But nothing we couldn't fix and get uh, get running uh, again easily. So uh, I'm going to keep cutting. We're going to go hit up a 15-acre field on the other side of the tree line to uh, finish filling the uh, semi-trailer. And then that will probably be it for today. We'll probably come back and cut tomorrow afternoon for a while. And then uh, if conditions stay right, all next week we'll be in the combine. So uh, get these beans knocked out. I do have a demo it's supposed to be coming next week sometime on a uh, new S set. Well, not new, but newer S78 Gleaner combine. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, they're just checking on heads to see when they can, what head availability they have for it. And uh, if they got a head for it, they're going to bring it to me and uh, let me demo it. Let Dad and I run it for a while and see what we think. So uh, I'm going to get a gleaner and then I'm going to talk to Eric Poynton at Bing Welker Equipment and uh, see if he'll get me out a uh, case machine which, uh, equivalent size. So, uh, damn grass. We'll see what happens. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Still haven't taken a demo on a new Hyundai Excavator, a 200 size machine yet, because just really haven't had the project that would be perfect to demo it on yet. So uh, that's why you haven't seen the new Excavator come yet. It just I haven't felt like the times have been right to get one. So I've been waiting for that one project to come up. There will be a great test for it. So, uh, and I didn't get to do any gold mining this year. Or, and didn't even get to wash any stone this year with the trommel. Kind of just been so busy doing everything else that that stuff got pushed by the wayside. But hey, there's always next year to do all that. So uh, we'll get these beans cut, get the corn picked, and move on to uh, late fall and winter activities. Who knows, we might still set the trommel up and still wash some stone and mine some gold this, this winter. We'll see how the winter goes. So, anyways, if you like this episode of Dirt Green Steel, give me a like and a subscribe. It's really rough right here. I'd greatly appreciate it if you give me this likes and then subscribes. Uh, keep my channel rolling. I know a lot of people love watching me, and I love all your questions and comments. I know sometimes it takes me a couple days to get back to you, but I will get back to your questions and comments, and uh, I enjoy every one of them. I do read them, don't think that I don't, it's just that sometimes I don't have time to reply. So, anyways, I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.